I recognize there are tons of videos online showing how to install these vintage air kits into older pickup trucks. So I'm not gonna bore you guys to death with all the details of that, but mostly just wanna cover that this is what we're using. So if questions come up later, or if anyone's ever interested in purchasing the truck, the video catalog is complete. Put an image on screen of what the part number is that we ordered. Essentially, it's for this truck 86 model that came with factory AC. I won't drag all this out for now, but kind of give it a quick overview. Got your hose. These are evaporator mounting brackets. This is the replacement for the glove compartment because it has to shrink considerably. Here's some plastic ductwork backing that they send you, as well as a back, uh, block off plate that goes in the passenger side kick panel. Control panel. It's nice, it has the chromed buttons. Let's see. There's the uh, heater control valve. It's kind of the main wiring harness. It has the circuit breaker to go to your battery and then that relay. Here's just some general mounting stuff as well. Hose ends, the hose. Let's see, looks like wiring for the compressor mounts for the evaporator. Another mounting bracket may be related to the evaporator. Hoses that probably come through the dash. More mount brackets. That's the evaporator in here. There'd be the condenser. This is a compressor. If they send with it, of course, it's like a seven rib or something but it's still gonna use this factory belt. And that's one of the things I wanna show you. If you look on screen, this is when I mocked it up. If you look on screen, like that's not what you're watching. On screen right now, you can see where I mocked up the brackets for the passenger side low mount, made sure it worked. And then I put some paint on them, I went ahead and have them installed. And uh, you can see the tensioner here. There's a few reasons I want the compressor located in that position, because I'll tell you the guys at Vintage Air really didn't want to sell it to me because they're afraid that there's not a lot of frame clearance right here and that it may require some fabrication, which as you guys know, we're not scared of that. I like that it's down here in the factory location because for number one, it uses a factory belt. And if you're out and about somewhere and need to buy a belt, chances are one will be on the shelf. Low center of gravity is kind of nice. Also, if you're ever going to do like a single turbo mount, or even if you did twin turbo, you don't need to try to relocate that compressor at that time because all those lines have to have the ends formed on them. It's not super easy to just change it. So nice to have this down and out of the way. I can't imagine this being true, but if there's someone else out there running the low mount vintage air kit and a TCI um, independent front suspension uh, pro touring setup with their LS brackets, you're gonna have to notch it like this to clear that compressor. And if you're that guy that's doing this and that with these, shoot me a message. I'm gonna send you a free t-shirt or something. These are the firewall block off plates. You guys probably saw in one of my other videos where I just stripped everything off of this firewall when I was tearing the truck apart. For now, I've just got that laying in there. Uh, you put this in a couple of the factory screw locations and then mark where these holes have to be drilled. I just kind of sprayed black spray paint right there, so that should give us a nice indicator. Drill those holes out. I'm going to put some RTV on this panel and then attach it more permanently. Also, I'm probably just going to hit this with some maybe a high, beard, high build rubberized undercoating, give it a nice uniform look. Do some over there too to sort of tie it all together. So I've got the heart of this beast sitting up here on the toolbox. My first impression is this thing has some size to it. Like it's really tall and long. I know it's been a while since I did an old Air Products one in a square body, but I just don't remember the unit being this big. And I know for sure the Resto Mod Air we did on that F100 wasn't as large as this, but it wasn't as comprehensive either. So a little forgiveness there. I do like how the processor or circuit board is mounted on board. 
Also, the expansion valve is mounted on board because you know one of the things I couldn't stand about the square body was how that thing stuck out through the firewall on the old air products. I'm not sure they understood what they were asking for here. You got a bolt with a washer on the outside of the firewall. You push it through this tiny hole, then magically hold these half inch spacers on the bolt as you thread them in to this plate that's on the back side of this air conditioning unit, which takes up all the space it can. Definitely a time to implement the buddy system. No more flying solo. Got the heater control valve mounted and the wires pulled through the firewall. Now, typically I would have just ran this compressor control switch out and sent the power and ground over to something reliable over by the fuse panel, but Vintage Air's instruction manual is pretty adamant about running these directly to the battery, this power and these two to the ground. They do give you plenty of wire length. I don't want to do anything to mess with the warranty in case we have issues. The AC is definitely not going to work down here. Not so much because of the frame contact, but it's making contact on the sway bar, which I could tolerance that or clearance that, I guess. It's making a little contact here on this power steering line, which I could clearance that. The biggest problem is the compressor hits right here on this engine mount. And even if I tried to move the engine forward a little bit, which would probably make it work like that, we're still gonna have a lot of issues with more things coming into contact with the sway bar the further this engine comes forward. So maybe that's just not the right move to make. We'll just have to go with the big high mount. Well, it's a real shame that other compressor mount didn't work out because I had to have them send me this high mount, which apparently is made by Quick Performance. This is a $270 kit and it doesn't even come with a belt. I installed the water pump so I can go ahead and mock up this AC bracket. I'll just leave it there finger tight. And easy to take off if we need to. All right, let's kick the tires and light the fires. I'm gonna call that a successful enough test that we can put all the ductwork and the vintage air together and put the dash in this bad boy. Here running this ductwork, and I'll tell you a pro tip, probably pull these vents back out of the dash because to get that to squish down and fit over these is gonna require all three hands. On the back side of the dash, they give us this enclosure, not pre-drilled to just kind of encapsulate the vent on the far passenger side. And then the center vent, we're gonna clip one of these little guys inside this housing, which mine's broken a stud. I'm sure you guys are probably running into that, especially if you have OEM dashes. Those things were total junk. And this is a new dash and still kind of junk. It should look like this when you're finished. Again, and these are broken, but I keep some of these little push clips over there um, in my hardware bins. And these are little short self-drilling Phillips because those things broke off and they will not, they're not long enough to mess with that dash, but it'll hold this in place nice and sturdy. These were all good, shockingly. Um, also on these vents, you guys know how easy they kind of get floppy. I just keep, or you run to your hardware store, get some Velcro, cut about an inch off, maybe put a hole in the middle or cut a notch and put it on the inside edges of these and then snap them back in place and it'll really keep them right where they need to be. They sell gaskets for those on LMC for a couple, three dollars. Then you're gonna pay shipping and tax and all the good stuff in a week to get it there. So a little pro tip, keep some Velcro to hold those from being floppy. When you're doing this reinstall, they wanted you to keep this piece of ductwork from the factory and then cut it in a certain spot from here 
and then use this funky little thing and stick on the back and then mate that, I guess, to the factory louver on the driver's side, left side of the steering wheel for this location. Now mine wasn't in the truck whenever I got it, so it probably was hanging down or fell out, whatever. This is the only approved opportunity using duct tape in an automobile, and literally you're using it for what it was designed for, for duct work. For those of you who have perfect glove compartments, get ready to cut that thing up so you can install this little miniature version at least you still have some storage i mean you lose quite a bit but i don't know that's not the worst thing in the world i suppose when you're cutting the ductwork for your dash make sure you leave it a little extra long vintage air does give you i don't know an extra four to six inches a piece that you need to run it and the instructions even give you some measurements which i don't tend to trust but I ended up having to tape what I had left over to one that I shorted myself uh, when I had to pull my dash back out because this speaker was blown. Actually, I think it was in the way of the dash cover and it tore it. So I put a three and a half inch in, uh, three and a half inch in there. Anyway, make sure these are plenty long. Um, probably easiest to attach it to the dash and then snorkel them down through the holes and attach it to the vintage air kit once it's installed. Except for this panel, this one may be easier because you set this little gauge display on here and then you can attach it before you stack the dash pad on top. You might even want to put a zip tie on these just on the inside of where the little step is to hold your hoses in place. Now that I have the core support set in place, I went ahead and put together the condenser assembly and got it mounted up. Fit really well. I'm definitely pleased with their hardware and the stuff that they used. I will say the first thing they want you to do is put the brackets on the condenser and leave all those fasteners loose until you get all the fasteners into the radiator support, then tighten everything up. Now that I've got the core support on here, mounted the radiator, the fluid line is all supposed to be done in hard line, which is super interesting. So I just have it kind of mocked up, threaded this in place. I had to bend some of this by hand to get around these mild tubs from slosh tubs. And then because it was so tight right here, I used my tubing bender and put a, put a little curvature in that bad boy. The main thing is make sure you check the face of the O-ring before you go to tighten it and make sure it's laying nice and even. Cause if you pinch one of those, it'll just leak uh, your Freon out. Suction line was super easy for the setup with the passenger side uh, compressor mount. I cut most of it off. I just put this in place, kind of laid the hose up here and cut off what I didn't need. I may end up actually cutting a little bit more to try to get a little more angle that way without it creating like an S shape. I don't know, I could cut another quarter inch off. So again, these are just bent by hand. Whoops, there's this fitting here. Those kind of go together. Now I'll do this pressure line, which has to go to here. And it comes with a 90 that you can kind of cut to fit wherever you want on the hose. I just stuck it on the end there. And then your service port is made on this straight section, which I will certainly just mount that up close to the condenser. Dryer, I guess, is more what I should call it. And then cut this hose to fit where I like it to lay going to the compressor. I did cut about a quarter of an inch off of this suction hose, which gave me the angle that I'm happy with. Now on the discharge side, oh my gosh. So I've threaded one end uh, that has the service port that goes to the top of the condenser. Did put oil on these O-rings of everything. There's plenty of hose here, I guess, in case you ran a driver side compressor. So what I want to do is, some oil on this o-ring too it comes with this oil and, and all the o-rings kind of thread this this is what i did for the suction side as well now i don't want this service port to roll over and point towards the battery because it'd be difficult to get to so i'm going to kind of hold it up this direction something like that cut it a little bit long 
try it. Yeah, let's see. We can make that quite a bit shorter actually because it could angle more and we can get rid of this bend and we don't have to worry about it curving around the battery. But you want to keep in mind this engine is going to have some movement and you don't want it to be causing too much stress. Now when you go take these somewhere to crimp them, it's always a good idea to get a sharpie or something and draw a line that goes across the hose and the fitting so they don't actually rotate it when they crimp it in place because it'd be kind of a pain if your service port ends up pointing right at something that you can't access or it doesn't fit otherwise. With these two fittings crimped on now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fenders and the inner fenders because when I do get that lower uh, fitting, we will be able to kind of route that much easier without this stuff in our way. So we're back at Ross's shop. Let's get this AC charged now that the truck's on the road and running and driving and doing pretty much everything it's supposed to do. So we've got a big event this weekend we're gonna do and we're definitely gonna want this air conditioner working. So we're getting the vacuum pulled down because you'll verify, or the machine will verify that we don't have any leaks when it pulls a vacuum on the system. Then it'll ask us how much pressure to put in this bad boy. When you install one of these AC systems, sometimes this is like the longest 10 minutes of your life when it pulls that vacuum down to see if you have any leaks. Well, it's rather disappointing. AC did take a charge and didn't leak, so that's all well and good. When the compressor engages the clutch it's misaligned immediately and the belt can't decide which rib it wants to run on on the compressor pulley i noticed the belt was kind of bouncing around so i came up to the parts store and just thought i'd just swap them while they would let me so Turn this air back on, and it seems to have fixed it with just a smaller bell. So now that we're back from the parts store with the correct belt, I like to do this little test to kind of show how well the AC works. The truck's not been shut off since we made our drive home, so I don't know if we can get like a temperature read on things. 103 concrete reads 102.4 so it's definitely not cool outside open the hood cool that's the full build be on the lookout for a video coming up soon for a little king of the open road trip that my buddy j-rod puts on i hope you enjoyed this vintage air coverage kind of a head to toe video a lot of them don't show it from start to finish and it took several months to get uh, the footage to do that um but i'm glad to if you guys learned something leave a comment down below i always respond to reasonable questions <laughs> see you later